dear students as we have discussed in the last class classical economics used the quantity theory of money to explain the determination of prices in the economy quantity theory has two versions one is the equation of exchange the other one is cash balance approach now in this session we will discuss the equation of exchange people hold money to buy goods and services the more money the need for transactions the more money they will hold so the quantity of money in the economy is related to the number of dollars exchanged in transactions quantity of money in the economy is related to number of dollars exchanged in transactions a given nominal stock of money so the nominal stock of money denoted as em or em yes a given nominal stock of money m move between individuals as various transactions are made over a period of time if you consider a one year time period a unit of money circulates many times in a period of one year now we give a definition the the average number of times the stock of money turns over each period in the course of these transactions is called transactions velocity of circulation transactions velocity denoted as v that is the average number of times a unit of money circulates in the economy is known as transactions velocity of money or transactions velocity of circulation now the product of the stock of money and the transactions velocity average number of times a unit of money circulates is equal to total nominal value of transactions during a given period of time so is equal to total nominal value of transactions total nominal value of transactions we denote it as p that i explain so money stock multiplied by transactions velocity is equal to total nominal value of transactions during a given period of time say one year now the link between transactions and money is expressed in the form of an equation the link between transactions nominal value of transactions and stock of money is expressed in the form of an equation known as equation of exchange or also known as 
quantity equation. Equation of exchange or what is known as quantity equation. The link between transactions and money. And uh, this quantity equation or equation of exchange is an identity. It is an identity relating volume of transactions at current prices to volume of transactions at the current prices to supply of money times velocity of circulation. So equation of exchange is an identity relating volume of transactions at the current prices volume of transactions and the, at the current prices to stock of money multiplied by the volume of transactions. In the form as it is used by the American economist Irving Fisher, this identity is written as MV, MS or MV is equal to PT. This is nominal value of transactions. MS or simply M is the quantity of money. We simply write it as M, supply of money. V is the transaction velocity, that is the num average number of times a unit of money circulates in the economy. P is an index of, uh, price index of the items traded and T is volume of transactions. That means money multiplied by volume of transactions, I mean velocity is equal to volume of transactions and it is an identity given the definition of the terms M, V, P and T. It is an identity, the definition of these variables make it true. But this equation is useful because it shows that as one of the variable changes, one or other, one or uh, one of the others must change to maintain the equality. For example, if money stock increases with V remaining unchanged, then either P or number of transactions will change to maintain the equality. So this is the equation of exchange, MV is equal to PT, an identity relating money multiplied by velocity is equal to volume of transaction at the current prices. Now when we study the role of money in the economy, that is to explain the role of money as a determinant of price level, economists use a slightly different version of the quantity theory. The problem with this quantity equation is that the number of or the volume of transactions T is difficult to measure. So we replace T with the V so, so Y so that MV is equal to PY. T is the volume of transactions and uh, the problem is T is difficult to measure. So T is replaced by Y and T and Y are related because more the economy produces more will be the number of or the quantum of transactions but they are not the same but they are not one and the same thing because suppose that uh, there is a transaction involving a used car used car a car produced in in a previous year so even though the sale and purchase a transaction is included in t it is not included in Y because Y is volume of or transaction involving current output only. 
but we can say that the the wall the dollar volume of transactions will be pro, will be roughly proportional to the value of output so expressed in this form y is output p is the price per unit or a price index m and v as usual so the quantity equation is mv is equal to p1 now remember this why we take a y instead of t the this py is nothing but gnp and we have the measure of gnp p into that is nominal gnp and if you recollect national income accounting from the product side we calculate national income using expenditure approach that is the number of units of each commodity purchased multiplied by the price that will be equal to mv so that is gnp that is equal to m times velocity of circulation if m is 300 and v is 10 then it p by gnp will be 3000 3000 in nominal terms now since y is the total income total output v in this version of the quantity theory is known as income velocity instead of transaction velocity now v is income velocity in this version v is now income velocity and defined as the average number of times a unit of money is used in the course of conducting final transactions involving current output final transactions involving current output so it is income velocity and the equation of exchange is a truism equation of exchange or quantity equation is a truism and it does not explain the values of any of the variables contained in it it will not explain the values of any of the variables contained in the equation now fisher and other quantity theorists postulated that equilibrium values of the elements of the equation is determined by factors other factors except price level fisher and other quantity theorists assumed that the values of the variables in this equation other than price is determined by other factors then the equation of exchange or the quantity equation is used to explain price level equation of exchange or quantity equation is then used to explain to determine price level so quantity theory of money is a theory explaining price level determination there are two versions one is the equation of exchange that we are discussing now now fisher argued that v the velocity is determined by payment habits and payment technology in the society such as average length of the pay period use of atms etc which will affect the velocity of circulation now as an example this example we will explain in detail when we study keynesian theory of demand for money if the pay period is shorter average money holdings for any level of income will be low so that there will be an increase in the velocity there will be an increase in the velocity m is the supply of money 
and m is the supply of money is a concept which we will explain later it is the amount of money held by the public so if payment period is shorter daily weekly etc then v velocity increase quantity of money held by the person decreases that we will explain with a numerical example later so according to quantity theories the equilibrium level of velocity or velocity is determined by institutional factors It's like uh, institutional factors like uh, payment habits payment technology uh, average such as average length of the pay period use of atms etc so as velocity is determined by institutional factors we can assume that it is fixed in the short so v is taken as fixed in the short term so v is fixed then in the classical theory of income and output determination which we have discussed in the previous classes we have determined the real variables in the system without a reference to money that is real income level of employment real output real wage etc are determined in the real sector of the economy without a reference to the stock of money in addition to this classical economists assumed that wages are flexible so that equilibrium in the labor market is consistent with the full employment so if uh, there is full employment in the economy ensured by flexibility of prices and wages we can assume that y is also a constant that is y is fixed at full employment level so v is fixed y is fixed if v and y are fixed then a change in the money supply causes price level a change in the money supply causes price level so in the classical system classical economists also assumed that central bank controls nominal money in circulation m nominal money money stock supply of money available with the public is controlled by the central bank that we will discuss later in detail so as m is controlled by the central bank central bank has the power to determine nominal value of total spending or what we say is central bank has power to determine the price level so it follows that with the real variables determined in the labor market together with the, the production function the only variable that the central bank or the government can influence is the price level why is determined in the labor and commodity market v is assumed to be fixed so central bank or government can determine only the price level now the quantity equation can be viewed as a definition it define v as a ratio between nominal gnp and quantity of money we can consider v as equal to py by m so quantity equation can be viewed as a definition that is it define v as the ratio between py and m but if v is predetermined if v is predetermined and not simply defined to equate mv is equal to py then equation of exchange is not merely a definition 
if v is predetermined not a variable to equate mv to py then equation of exchange is not a merely a definition let let me explain this in the form of a definition with output fixed from the supply side equation of exchange now expresses a relationship of proportionality between exogenously given money supply and the price level so with the output fixed from the supply side equation of exchange now expresses a relationship of proportionality between the stock of money the supply of money and price level that is m into v bar is equal to p into y bar bar means that they are quantities fixed so that p is equal to v bar by y bar into m that is p is proportional to m keeping v and y constant keeping v and y constant so this equation indicates that price level depends on the supply of money p is proportional to the supply of money if uh, there is a doubling of the money supply there will be a doubling of price level if there is a 10% increase in the supply of money there will be a 10% increase in price level if there is a doubling of the supply of money there is a doubling of price level so in the classical theory price level is determined by money supply it is explained by the by the quantity theory of money remember this in economics theories are used to explain economic phenomena so quantity theory is a theory explaining price level so this is the basic result of the quantity theory quantity of money determines price level and this idea resonates throughout the history of economic thought this idea resonates throughout the history of economic thought now it follows logically that if y and v are fixed and if uh, the central bank accelerates the supply of money then all that the central bank can accomplish is an accelerating growth in the price level and which we call inflation so the theory the classical theory supports the idea that inflation is caused by lax monetary policy according to milton friedman the famous monetarist of the chicago school inflation is always and everywhere a monetary phenomena inflation is always and everywhere a monetary phenomena that is inflation is caused by excessive increase in the supply of money this is the basic result of quantity theory now as we will see later the quantity theory is not a very credible theory explaining price level determination or inflation because in the real world v is unstable v is not a constant v is not a, is not a constant it is not a stable it is unstable and we cannot also assume that y is always at a fixed full employment level and if uh, v and y are not uh, constant at, as it is assumed in the classical theory then the proportionality between money and prices will not be obtained now these are things which we will see later these are the criticisms against uh, classical theory also while analyzing the behavior of 
money multiplier is a topic which we will see later it is assumed that central bank controls money supply and money multiplier is based on a few assumptions and these assumptions need not be satisfied in the real world that also we will see later also we cannot assume that m is exogenous actually m is endogenous its a quantity expands or contracts pro cyclically uh, depending on the demand for money by profit seeking individuals if money is endogenous you will not get this result if uh, uh, similarly the uh, the assumptions behind money multiplier is not satisfied you will not get this result similarly if v and y are not constant you will not get uh, this result so this is the equation of exchange one version of the quantity theory of money in the next class we will consider the second version the cambridge cash balance approach